internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and Synergy Collaborative and Appropriate. I've got coffee and I've got my friend, Abby. You there? Yeah. Cheers. I'm here. This is cool. He's, uh, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship today and he's at a coffee shop and that's the new mode of operational uh, entrepreneurship is to just a mobilepreneur. You don't need an office. That's the way it works. That's funny. That's the first time I've ever, I've ever heard of mobilepreneur. Oh, really? Uh, I, I like that. Yeah. I've never heard that term before. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like it. <laughs> it was in a lot of the circles that I was in. It was all about being a mobilepreneur and running off your phone. That's kind of how I do all this stuff, too. I got my little uh, little deal for when I do Facebook Lives. I turn them, tell them to turn the sound up so they can hear what's going on. And Oh, that's so smart. That's, uh, that's awesome. Can, I'm going to copy that. Is that cool? Absolutely. That's not mine. That's awesome. from, um, God, I can't remember the guy's name now, but I can't remember his name. Ah. Uh. But he That's does really a lot cool. of uh, like YouTube that. videos and he uses little cue cards like that. But it's important because we've been doing some tests on Facebook. I don't know if you do any Facebook stuff, but people don't have their sound up. You get views, yeah. but they're not necessarily really views because it's just people scrolling by on their phone. So if you do something ah. like that, it'll stop them and go, no wonder I can't hear it. My sound's not up. And they'll click on it and they'll try and adjust it. So it's, it's kind of important. That is super awesome. So let's get into <laughs> entrepreneurship, and we're going to talk about yeah, the trials it. and tribul tribulations and the struggles that an entrepreneur runs into. Um, I had mentioned that I've always been self-employed, so I haven't really had any of those struggles. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of I'm well, just you're, kidding. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, man. I mean, you know, if you can, if you can, have, if you can avoid a lot, of that, a lot of that, it definitely saves years off. It saves financial heartbreak sometimes for most people. And it's incredible just to think you don't have to deal with, I mean, I'm sure you deal with, deal with ups and downs and you know how to deal with the ups and downs of your industry. But um, yeah, to not, not necessarily have that devastating kind of fan, fan, financial effect, that's well, awesome. They sometimes so. say that you're supposed to like commit and paint yourself mm -hmm. into a corner so that you, there's no other way out. It's kind of like the difference between uh, participation and commitment. And in a ham and egg yeah. breakfast, the chicken is participating. The pig is committed. <laughs> so I'm using that for my Instagram post. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> I got a lot of these. I'm supposed to be interviewing you. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> but the, the thing with entrepreneurship cool. is, is when you're thinking, thinking about quitting, it's because you're yeah. just about to have a breakthrough. So you got to get past that one little thing and you're going to, it's that inches from gold kind of. Thing. So tell us a little bit about your story yeah. about some struggles that you had as far as getting into entrepreneurship. But, yeah, most definitely. So I have an electrical engineering degree. That's, that's um, what I went to school for. I haven't used it up until today. I'm kind of like you in a way where you know, I, I graduated and I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm just going to kind of do what I want. And I knew that I had a fascination, like this, this love for real estate. I was fascinated by real estate, but I didn't really know how to make it work for me as well as I wanted to. And that was my self-directed discovery process in, uh, in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, when I went to school. So during that time, you know, you, you have your classmates, you have your parents, your friends that are like, yeah, what are you doing? You know, it's, you're so weird. It doesn't make any sense. You know, you're not, you're not supposed to do any of this stuff. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't right. make... It's the get, why don't you, you just know, get a job? Like yeah, people. right. And and I felt like there was so much wrong with that. And that's for me it just it it's not my it's not my vibe, it's not my personality. And I realized in college that my personality was um compassion for people. I love people. Like I'm 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 totally about other people. And I wouldn't get that necessarily at like a big accounting firm or a big tech company because you know, I'm, an, I'm a hardware guy. So what would I do? I would help, my, my level of impact would be helping 
fourth quarter earnings by increasing the processor speed by a gigahertz. Right. And that's not really my <laughs> not really my thing. Right. And so I was criticized a lot. You know, I was criticized and I failed a lot in college. I started this uh, I was totally anti Windows for a very long period of time. I was Linux, I was using Unix, I was using Solaris, and I had a little consulting business in Michigan that helped small business owners convert from Windows to Linux. And I thought that was a good idea until I realized that people don't want anything complicated. <laughs> <laughs> they just want something. Well, you've already they gotten want... complicated by even mentioning those things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Windows? So, There's some Windows? Yeah. Right. And then, you know, Apple came along. They're like, well, Apple's always been in the picture, but, you know, the sim simplicity is key and king. And uh, I thought I could break that, and that didn't work. And then I had some wholesaling stuff, some buying and selling of uh, mortgage notes that I was doing. Some of that worked, some of that didn't work. So it was constant, like, I used to get up for the opportunity. I used to do as much for the opportunity as possible, and then the opportunity used to get slammed in my face, uh, like a door being shut in your face. It was, and it was, it was denial over and over and over and over. It's like being beat down. Yeah. And it was just very stressful. Plus a uh, plus a 17 credit hour course at Michigan, which is a really tough credit load to take, wasn't really helping. <laughs> like I had assignments and projects and exams and midterms and finals and you know paying attention to mentors and toastmasters and being able to deliver speeches confidently but and not having the confidence. sleep once in a while <laughs> and the sleep factor yeah that's why you learned how to do coffee shops <laughs> yeah that's right so a lot of that was happening and i didn't realize it but it was how do you how do you how do you get a diamond now, how are diamonds made right with an immense amount of pressure right and I realized that everything around me, all this stuff was just pressure. It was pressure building on top of pressure, building on top of more pressure. And ultimately, it helped. You know, I failed in sure. Detroit with, uh, with some of my real estate stuff. I, had, I mean, and when you meet me in person, you'll, you'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like five foot five. I guess I'm five foot five and 120 pounds. That make me feel confident I'm five seven. I, <laughs> look, look at this. I got, I got nothing here, man. Okay. I got nothing. I work out. I still can't. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm, not about to, uh, I'm not about to go do heavy labor right. on a real estate rehab. I'm not that guy. And I realized that when, you know, when I got a call from one of my contractors, uh, this, was after, this was after class. It was in the evening. A contractor called, and I still had a flip phone back in the day. I had a good old Motorola V600 flip phone. And he left me a message and he said, hey, you need to get down to your property, your project. I've left a shop back for you and I have to go pick up my kids. I'm like, all right, that's fine. I'm going to go do your thing. I'm not going to hold you from your kids. So in Ann Arbor, I had this uh, 1992 Honda Civic DX, this super small hatchback of a car, um, zero wheel drive, no heat. Uh, everything was just wrong with it, bald tires so I could barely drive in the snow. And so it started to it started to snow in Ann Arbor. By the time we get to Detroit, it's a full on blizzard. I can't see where I'm going. It's tough. And uh, I pull up to the property. I pull into the driveway. I walk inside, and I hear running water. I'm like, okay. I get the running water. I understand now why the shop vac is there. But I didn't know how serious the running water was until I went down to the basement, and it, I was like, I was neck deep in water. It was crazy. <laughs> And shop vac for that? Thank you. Yeah. Someone. And in that moment, I knew that I knew very little about real estate. I knew that I needed to learn more. So it was frightening, but it was also very enlightening for me. Mm -hmm. So in my being scared, super scared state of mind, I, uh, I put on my jacket and I'm like, well, I need help. So here I am knocking on doors, all five foot five of me, knocking on doors in inner city Detroit one of the highest crime zip codes in Detroit <laughs> at 9.30 at night, <laughs> knocking on doors and asking for help. And it took me about an hour and a half to find a good neighbor who uh, had mercy on my soul. And he said, all right, man, I'll, I'll help wow. you out. Let's, let's come on over. So we, we labored away, told away until maybe about 2 o'clock in the morning it was, uh, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, this there's no chance. There's no way. I mean, we, we helped some of the water level. We got that down a little bit. And I'm going to just go home, man. I'm going to go to sleep. And this was a two-story place. I had no bed. 
no heat, no mattress, no blanket. And I wasn't about to drive to Ann Arbor because it was a blizzard outside. My, my car was already covered in snow. <laughs> so the only thing that I remembered from physics, physics class was that heat rises, right? So heat rises to the top. So I went to the second story and um, I slept there. And that was, that was it. That was it for the night. And I woke up the next morning and I had to class. So it was a very, it was a very frightening experience, but at the same time, so did you get you know, the water I, to stop or anything, or is it keep on? It kept going. I, I, you know, what's funny is I have an engineering degree, right? And is, I, it, I'm supposed... is it still going? <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Man, I don't know. It, it could be. Um, so I'm supposed to think logically, right? I didn't think about looking for the source of the leak first. Okay. I didn't think about that. I just, I just saw the problem. I'm like, oh crap! I need to move water out. But that didn't really, it didn't work, really work for me. But. And that was that was scary because you know, mom and dad had no idea what I was doing. My friends were criticizing me. Um, my girlfriend at the time had no idea. She was like, "Are you are you kidding me? Like this really? This doesn't make any sense." So I didn't really have anybody to turn to. Um, I had mentors, but they weren't really mentors. They took advantage of me, and I had myself. I had myself and just my sheer will to say, "You know what? One, this is never going to happen again, and two, I need a much better team." So. so what was the next step after that, after you realized that? Was it, uh, was it then realizing that that's not the part you delegated that kind of like landlordship to someone else, like a management company or something and said, uh, I don't totally. Know that. okay. Yeah. Totally. Yep. And so I figured out what my strengths and weaknesses were because everybody has strengths and everybody has weaknesses. Mine are doing rehabs in a house. I would much rather have, say, somebody more veteran than me with more experience to do that while I work more on the capital side. And that, you just have to go through the motions. You have to go through, you have to pay your dues. And there are a lot of folks that say, you don't have to pay your dues anymore. Or, well, I disagree. I mean, you need to take the knocks. You need to know what you're good at. You need to know what you're bad at. And the only way you're going to do that is if you're actually doing something. Yeah, first off, you so, need to know what not to do. And the only way to know not to do it is to do it and find out it doesn't work. Yeah. Times. Unless you just know if you have some insight and some kind of an intuition that you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, sometimes you just got to try it. Um, there's multiple things like that. You just got to swing the bat and give it a shot. I did a 6,000 piece mailing once that I thought was going to be a great deal wow. of doing magic at wedding receptions and then offering a free video recording of the wedding. And I did 6,000 yep. pieces and got nothing out of it. But I had to try. Oh, you had to try. <laughs> you have to try. I mean, and that's where... And that's where people fail, right? People fail in entrepreneurship because, or even starting a small business, or even in real estate, I see it all the time, even in a good market, where the expectation is set. If we have an expectation in our mind that, you know, after a 6,000 mailing, a 6,000 mailers going out, that we're going to be millionaires and, you know, decamillionaires, and we're, we'll have all this business and we'll have people and systems and everything. That's just not true. You know, you have to work hard. You have to really put... The time well, and some place. People, some people say working hard, but I, I think that the days of working hard are the, the shovels and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I don't, it's really persistence. You got to keep going. You got to keep on trying it. I agree. Um, working hard, working smart. I, I had agree. A, I had a thought and it disappeared, but, but it was, oh, it was about, um, in my case, I've always been entrepreneurial and I've always had my own been self-employed, but I'd thought about getting a job. And then I realized that Going and looking for work is just as hard as looking for the next gig. So yep. why would I want to go do, to hand out my resume and all that stuff when I could be handing out my business card? It's the totally. same thing. I'm with you. It's the same, same thing, thing, 24 hours in a day. And the, the, the thing yep. is, when I hand out my business card, I could scale it up quite a bit. Rather than taking a job yep. at 20 bucks an hour, I'm stuck. You know, there's a ceiling there. Yeah. No, I agree. It, it, it was the late Jim Rohn, I believe, who said um, the, the, the value that you create, your, the, your income is directly related to the value that yep. you create in this world, right? If exactly. you create more value for somebody else and you're consistent and persistent in creating that value not only for that person but for other people and you get good at creating value, then not only are you seen as an authority but then the universe rewards you for helping somebody else. That's a, and that's what a I whole other area of that whole spiritual, oh. mental mindset kind of uh, yes. law of attraction stuff that some people believe in and some people don't. But 
it's yeah. it's really really true what you focus on expands that's just the way that it works and it's kind of like when you buy that car all of a sudden you see a bunch of them around it's true that's just yeah. the way that it happens and then so yeah. let's shift a little bit more into the end of real estate investing because some people think okay real sure. estate investing i need to learn how to go buy I, a house then i need to put on my blue jeans and my t-shirt and i need to yeah. work on it make it better and then sell it that's one way of doing it but the, another way of doing it is just thinking smart um, there's ways to invest in real estate without even having a real estate license. I'm invested in REITs, Absolutely. real estate investment trusts. Mm -hmm. So I'm just put some money into that and it, it does gradually go up. Uh, another thing is just yep. working with the realtor and doing some bird dogging for them and you can get commissions off of stuff or working with yep. an investor or a developer. You can do that kind of stuff without having to go to school and learn exactly and you you can do that stuff without having to pay you know your your 30 or 40 or 50 thousand dollars to some to some guru type to you teach brain. you these things that's right yeah. you know and that's 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 the reason i created real estate deal talk you know real estate deal talk for me is my way of giving back to new investors pro investors of where i was how i've failed how i've succeeded talking about these things and bringing people on to really help with the knowledge base like you said, I mean, you can go to YouTube, you can go to YouTube, be persistent, learn as much as you need to. And what you said is brilliant. I mean, you have to be resilient, but also you have to be able to shake some hands, get on the phone and say, hey, you know, you know, hey, Brad, you know, I, I understand that you're an agent in Atlanta. You know, my name's Abby and, uh, you know, I'm looking for a couple of homes and this is what I'm looking at doing. But I understand that you have a lot of buyers. So if I'm driving around, if I find a property, could I maybe you know, get a referral fee or something if I send it to you. And if you're just, if you're genuine in that in that delivery, I mean, what's the answer going to be? The answer is going to be yes, 100% of the time. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one one example is a real life example, but it's not real estate related. Another, and I'll start with just the possibility. Say, for example, you're in Cancun, you go to the resort, you see some guy sitting there, and there's a uh, he's doing a yoga retreat, and there's 30 people there, and you think. I know Diane, she does yoga. She wanted to do a retreat. What if I brought her there and she brought 30 people? I bet he would pay me a percentage oh, yeah. to do that. And then all of a sudden a light goes on and goes, oh my God, I could do this for multiple people and talk to the developer of the whole complex. So yes. if you just think that way, and what brought this on is that like some people will say, well, how much, how much valuable am I? Um, I had a situation where I was doing some printed circuit board drafting and design when I was out of high school. And there was a situation yeah. where there was a printed circuit board that would go in this way, fine. If it went in this way, it would explode the machine because the connections were wrong. Okay. So yeah. all I did was I changed a part number on one of the screws to make it a little bit longer. So when you flipped it yeah. around, it couldn't go in. Oh, wow. So all it was was changing a part number from a 003 to a 004 to make the screw longer. And it saved the company millions of dollars. It took me a second to take the change of three to a four. But how valuable awesome. is that? It's just the That's mind. That's massive value. value. So it saves the company millions yeah. of dollars. It took me a second. Totally. And that's and that's if we if we start to use that lens. And I think I think we're we're talking about this lens, right? This lens of opportunity. We have to tweak it, refine it, and tweak it, refine it to see these things. And you just start very simply by asking somebody. We're gonna ask anybody. You go to the coffee shop. How can I help you today? What can I do for you today? And the more that we do that, and that's how I started. I was, believe it or not, when when I was really young. I'm sure. I'm sure maybe all of us have been there, but. I was greedy. I was selfish. I was all. <laughs> I was all in it for me, and I realized I'm like, wait, what am I doing? You know, I'm not. I'm not being at all. I'm not being me. This is not who I am. This is not. This is not my. This is not right. And then I switched immediately into being of service. And the more that I did that, not only the more opportunities that I got, but I started to enjoy entrepreneurship, enjoy uh, creating businesses, turning businesses around, investing in real estate a lot more because I knew that the impact that I was making was making a difference more so in somebody else's life and that's what made me really really happy so it's really it's really fun to be able to take that idea in your in your what you have in your head feel whatever you need to feel about it if it's right then you do it if it's not then you know what don't do it 
but thoughts become feelings become things and exactly. it's such a great way I and mean, it's such a great way to live looking at it from a logical standpoint because a lot of people were, were in this mentality of this duality in our head of competition you know the, yeah. the republicans against the democrats the yins against the yangs me against my competition um yeah the synergy collaborative stuff that i do isn't about that it's all about collaboration and working together and uh, oftentimes I'll say, if your mother and father competed, you would not be here. They collaborated to make you manifest. It was, it was a collaboration of energy That's right. that made it happen. So That's when right. you work with someone else and say, how can I help you? And they tell you, it's going to reciprocate and it's going to create that, that viral uh, vortex of uh, manifestation and abundance. <laughs> Deep. Absolutely. I'm wearing my mom's yeah, no, and so. <laughs> <laughs> No, and it's and it's so true. And I remember in Detroit, I realized I'm like, wait a minute, I can't blame anybody else but me hmm? in this situation. I created the situation. It may have been because of my ignorance. It may have been because I wasn't smart enough, or I was being greedy and selfish, or whatever. But you know what? It wasn't anybody else. It was me. And Even the if moment you can that we blame take somebody, our, it doesn't aside. do any good. If you blame right. someone else Just, and delegate the responsibility onto somebody else that's already water under the bridge, who cares? T.R. Vecker, don't blame, complain, or justify. That's right. Doesn't make no sense. I agree. So, I, I agree. It's going to be, it's up to me. That's how we, <laughs> <bro. laughs> we can keep talking about this forever, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're going for about so 20 crucial. minutes, by the way. So, why don't we okay. shoot this one off and uh, give me some, uh, like you got your radio show or your podcast show or whatever. You want to walk throw out the domain for that so people yeah. can connect? Most definitely. So if you are if you want to reach out to me, if you have any questions just about business development or uh, real estate investing or just investing in general, basic principles, personal finance, this kind of thing. I love talking about it. Uh, the best way you can get you can get, re uh, get in touch with me, I talk fast sometimes. I need to stop that. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> the best way you can me is uh, go to realestatedealtalk.com and uh, shoot me a quick email. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and just reach out and say, hey, uh, even if it's just to say hi with a smiley face, I will respond back and it's me, I promise. Okay, well, let's sign this one off. I'd like to uh, talk awesome. a little further on you. I want to talk to you about uh, some ideas I've got for commercial resorts and stuff in places like Tulum, Mexico, yeah. Costa Rica, and Bali. I want to chat with you a little about that. So I'm going to sign this one off. Do we'll do another one. Um, down the road too. This is fun. This is cool stuff. So I uh, appreciate Most you definitely. taking the valuable time there while you're hanging out at a coffee shop. I got to go do that. <laughs> you so, got it. My pleasure, Brad. Thank you. Be well. Yeah. You too. Bye now.